what's it like to be back in New York? You know, you play New York Open every year, but now you're here for this event. What's it like to be back? It's great to be back. And I think I can speak for most people that everyone loves coming to New York. Of course, it's a little bit different than the US Open. We're not in the city. We're here in beautiful Long Island. But uh, for me, I, I really enjoy it. I actually quite like this weather as well. And I hear it's going to snow tomorrow, so that's, yeah. that'll be uh, pretty cool. It's, 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 it's actually really refreshing, I think. So, uh, and everyone's enjoying being here. The facilities here, are, as you know, are absolutely amazing. So it's great. John, uh, what do you think? Have you practiced on the surface yet this year? Is it playing faster, slower, height of the ball bounce? How's your game going to translate? Yeah, I, I'm really bad person to ask when it comes to that. I don't, I don't put too much stock into it. I, some people have said it's playing a little faster than last year, but if so, great, I guess. But uh, but the court is very fair. I mean, it's just a beautifully laid down court. A lot of times some indoor courts can be a bit bumpy, but this is um, a fantastic court. And I think it, I think it, it can definitely translate well to my game. All right, back. Thank you. And John, uh, after your slow start to the 2019 season, isn't this exactly what the doctor ordered for you, American hard courts? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've always um, played my best in, in the States, and this is, unfortunately, probably three or four years in a row, I've, I've started the year off pretty pretty poorly down in Australia. Can't really put my finger uh, as to why, um, but I had a, didn't have a great start last year. Uh, but I definitely ended the year pretty well and finished inside the top ten, which was nice. So, uh, yeah, look, the only, the only thing I can I can do is it's what I can control, and that's, um, you know, practice hard and work out hard um, away from tournaments, and, and that's what I've been doing since the Australian Open. So I'm definitely very, very eager uh, to get back out on the match court. And, um, but practicing hard doesn't, doesn't guarantee you anything. I just got to go out there and... Uh, play my game and um, you know, hope it's uh, good enough. Peter. Had a lot of time to process what happened last year's terrific year, making yep. the finals and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. What are your takeaways and how did it maybe shape your views this, this coming year, bringing your mm -hmm. training and your practitioner? Yeah, it was, it was a good year. Um, you know, I had really, I mean, I, in my opinion, I only had about four good tournaments, but that's what is sometimes what it takes to get your ranking pretty high, right? I played, of course, well in Miami, I played well in Wimbledon, U.S. Open, and in Atlanta. Uh, so, I had, a, I had a good year last year, I had some big results, which is important. I would like to have been more consistent last year, that's something I'm going to try to do better uh, this year as well. Uh, but now that I, I finished inside the top ten, even though I'm 33 and, and 34 in April, I I still physically, <clears throat> excuse me, feel great. I'm healthy. I'm really right now as healthy as I've I've ever been. Nothing's bothering me, which is very good. I think that's a testament to, you know, of course, working hard off the court and, and doing all the right things uh, off the court. So, um, with how I feel physically, I, I do think that this year can be can be another uh, good year. So I'm gonna try to build off um, what I did in 2018. The pressure to defend what you have. No, I don't. I don't think so. Everyone is going to gain points and lose points throughout the year. Uh, you know, there's a very good chance I'm going to lose some points come Miami unless I win it again. So it just uh, th th there's no pressure. I think when I was younger, I might have might have felt that. But I've done a lot of good things in my career, and as I said, your ranking's going to fluctuate a lot unless you're. Even Novak Djokovic's ranking fluctuated. He was like 18 last year, so uh, one point. So it happens to everyone, and it'll happen to me certainly this year as well. Michael. John, uh, you played Raleigh Opelka in Australia. I know you guys share the same agent. know each other a little bit. Certainly yep. a similar game. Um, what are your thoughts on what he seems to be doing so much better, and, and what was the keys to his improvement, and what do you see about him? Yeah, I, I just think he's he's definitely he's maturing. I think, I think that's the, the most important thing. We obviously know what he brings to the table. It's very, very similar to what I bring to the table. He's a, he's a big guy, but for a big guy, he moves well. Um, of course, he serves extremely well. On on top of that, so um, just like me, you know, it's he's a guy that's 
going to be in a lot of matches, even if he's really not playing so great cause, because of his serve. So uh, he's very young. I think he's only like 21. I could even be wrong. So and he's got a lot of a lot more years to develop down the road. So. He's, uh, he's going to be a force, in my opinion, uh, going forward for a pretty long time. Have you mentored him at all, or have you guys have any kind of relationship? Yeah, we have a very good relationship. We get along, as you said, we we share the same agent, and there's, of course, a lot of similarities uh, between us. So, well, he's a he's a good guy, a uh, very good guy, so and I always, uh, always wish him the best. John, now that it's sort of had time to settle in, what's it like being a dad? Yeah, that's the most fulfilling thing uh, I've experienced ever uh, being a father. Anyone who's father or mother out there can probably tell you that it's it's pretty amazing. So um, watching our kid, and our daughter develop and um, it just seems like it's a, something new every single day and it's been amazing. I think she's five months now and she just turned five months and so it's uh, pretty remarkable and it's, it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to my life and, and, my, and my wife's life. Has it changed your outlook at all when you're at a tournament when maybe you have a tough loss that maybe you're not as devastated as you used to be? Yeah, yeah well she was in Australia with us and I definitely had a tough loss there but you get to go back to see a smiling baby that you love very much is was pretty special. You know they're not here <clears throat> this week so I think leaving them of course was very tough it's especially tough the first day because you, I was with them for, of course, a long time after Australia, but um, I think they'll be on the road here in a little bit in my uh, upcoming tournaments. Eric, you mentioned that you brought your daughter to Australia. Mm -hmm. Any chance she will be joining you in New York this summer at the U.S. Open? Yeah, <laughs> I think there's a good chance of that. I don't know why, why she wouldn't. Uh, she was not there last year because she did not have not entered this world yet. So um, I think next year, yeah, she'll, or this year, excuse me, she'll uh, she'll be here. Jeff. Uh, being the fantasy uh, player of England, mm -hmm. have you uh, selected your uh, baseball players yet? Yeah. Might be any Mets or Yankees then? Uh, yeah. Your I, roster? I hope so. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of good players on both teams, especially the Yankees, but Right now, for me, it's uh, fantasy hockey season still. And so our, our baseball draft is generally around Miami, so I have to have some time for that. Uh, fantasy hockey is actually uh, is actually my favorite. Do you have any Islanders now? I have Josh Bailey on my team. Yeah. And the Islanders, as you know, are surprising everyone. Mm -hmm. So I, I follow um, NHL religiously. And I used to know, or I still know uh, Phil Pelov pretty well from both of our days in Tampa. He's actually a pretty big tennis fan, so it's cool. You have a first round bye. You play the winner of Lucas Lachko and Bernie Tomic. Your thoughts on playing either one of those two gentlemen? Yeah, I've, I've of course played both of them. I can't recall off the top of my head how many times, uh, but I think they're, I think they play today. So my, my, my yeah, my, my coach will be watching and I think that match could be pretty close to both very talented players. Uh, Lashko is an excellent ball striker, and Bernie, as you know, has a pretty unorthodox game. It can, he's, he can hit some funky shots, but he's very good and extremely talented, so uh, it doesn't really matter who I play. Um, I'm not rooting for anyone. I know that whoever I do play is going to be very tough. And you've been playing your best tennis later in your career. There are a lot of guys on the tour who play who've been playing well into their thirties mm -hmm. very well. Do you take any inspiration from that? Yeah, absolutely. That's a very good question. I do take inspiration from that. I think especially uh, Roger, right. who's now I think thirty seven. Yes, thirty seven. And so seeing him do it you know, doing what he's doing at, at thirty seven is is remarkable. Uh, and then you know, I think someone told me in the top ten in the world seven of us are in their 30s something crazy like that so uh, it's a pretty remarkable stat and tennis in the last five six years has sort of uh, gone that route where you can play for a long time and guys are maturing much later and I think I'm, I'm one of those as well Final question. John uh, we have a young American who's from right here on Long Island mm -hmm. Noah Rubin playing tonight mm -hmm. uh, taking it from the guys that are over 30 to the guys that are under 30 can you talk a little bit about the young Americans especially Noah and uh, mm -hmm. you know what we may see in the American tennis game moving forward 
Well, yeah, there's a lot of very good American players. I think right now we have the most amount of players inside the top 100 than, that we've had in a, a very long time, which is <clears throat> uh, very encouraging going forward. And Noah's a guy that I think eventually will get into the top 100 as well. He brings a lot to the table. Obviously, he's certainly smaller in, in stature, but he makes up with that for uh, with the you know with how he competes and how well he moves on top of that so he's just a one of many guys that I think are coming up and are going to be uh, in the main draws of big tournaments for for many years to come thank you guys